All righty, folks, we are going to have a conversation about the ORAT community. We're also going to highlight some key takeaways from the event, and we're going to do this with the one and only CEO of Hemlane, Dana Dunford. Dana, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me back on, especially after such a great weekend. Yeah, thank you for being a part of it. Thank you for uh, for flying out and uh, presenting in front of the audience. Um, that was really your first time interacting with the audience because a lot of your communication, obviously, is just you and I. Mm -hmm. um, so you got in front of roughly 300 or so uh, of One Rental at a Time fans. You also got in front of 25-ish real uh, One Rental at a Time millionaires. So how was the first experience? Yeah. The, so I have to say the first experience, um, I, I'll put it into two different parts. One is the community and culture. Mm -hmm. um, there's only one Michael Zuber. But what I thought was really, really cool about it and like a huge takeaway about the community itself was actually the interaction between the real estate investors when you weren't in the room and mm -hmm. everyone had something to learn from someone. So for example, at what time do you think about an assistant to help you? There was one real estate investor where one of his tenants, which was really cool. She became his ass assistant and mm. it was great because she understands both sides, right. Of the, of the, um, of the partnership with a tenant and owning rental mm -hmm. property. So that was really cool. And then um, how much like everyone has different problems that they deal with. And of course, there's only one Michael with all the content, but it was really cool to have other investors telling one another how they deal with things mm -hmm. such as, you know, I heard everything from, you know, the squatters, people having mm -hmm. um, terrible situations with squatters all the way um, to dealing with um, uh, rent by the room. That was like a big one and increasing cash flow and the potential risks with that. And so I thought it was really cool um, that the community was together. And the second thing that I would say about it was engagement. Mm. There was what I really love about the community is that it is actually not promotional. It's people pushing themselves forward to learn and do better and become um, a, not only passive investor, but also be able to get out of the nine to five and have that cash flow and build it up just one rental at a time and really hard work. And so what I thought was really cool about the event, which you don't see with any other events, is that it isn't promotional. And I mm -hmm. love that part of it. I love that there isn't somebody trying to sell something. It was motivational mm -hmm. speakers. It was economists. Like I just, that part of it, I, I can't say enough good things about because I thought it was really well done. And I see it also in the channel. So just, I think the community in general is about all achieving a goal and a mm -hmm. goal for your um, personal and financial freedom. And um, you don't see that a lot of times I think the host has a different agenda. They're trying to sell you something, yeah. whether it's their their own uh, syndication fund or something like that. And what I think is really cool is you're not actually trying to sell anyone any of that. You're just trying to make sure that their yeah. their dreams come true. And so that is one thing about the community that I have to say um, that is second to to none. I just I just don't see it with anyone else. Yeah, it was really important to me, right? Because I don't know if people realize this. This idea started almost five years ago, certainly four years ago, and I never thought it was possible. So when I when we got there, I was like, okay, right, this has been out there. And to me, this was always supposed to be a celebration of the community, mm -hmm. of the millionaires that I think make the channel, right? Because I I've said it, but I'll say it again. This channel does not exist. If I don't have 20 or 22 or whatever it is, millionaires come back. This could, mm -hmm. I couldn't be a talking head seven days a week or five days a week or whatever it would be. It just wouldn't exist. So for me, it was important to celebrate the audience. So, okay. So what, how does that look? How did I translate the goal of a celebration? First, to your point, I wasn't going to sell anything. I didn't sell a book. I didn't sell a t-shirt. You know, yeah. we did one donation. We did a, I don't think you were there for that. We raised a thousand bucks for the blind center. We gave it right to the blind center. So yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't going to recoup costs by selling a 15 or $20 book in, in, in the back of the room. That just never was going to happen. And I wouldn't let any speakers do that either. Yeah. And then second, I have always wanted to do an event. Always wanted to do an event where the audience drove the conversation. And 
That's why everybody had between 30 and 60 minutes. That's why half the talk was supposed to be driven by the audience because I wanted people to, you know, go directly. A lot of people hear my answers, but that's only my opinion, right? I'm one guy. There's mm -hmm. all these other stories out there. So I had some pretty hard and fast rules that that I had to stick to 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 make it unique. Yeah, no, I, from that perspective, I think uh, how you conducted it with um, the speakers, so who the speakers were, it was very thoughtful because people could relate on a personal level. And then also um, to your point of allowing the audience to have a lot of engagement. And I also think when it, it's more difficult than you think to build culture and um, community, it's much more difficult. It has to be very well thought out. And one of the things that I did like about it was there were breakout rooms. I, I tried not to go into them. I tried to, you know, obviously listen to the speakers in part because I was super excited to talk to them. But I did find that the breakout rooms were great for those like Dion who went over and was mm -hmm. in a breakout room talking to people the whole time. I thought that aspect of it was a really good balance so that people could have that one-on-one -on -one and then also engage um, with the speakers. And then I think the what's really cool about the community and how everything has, has been done is everyone's dealing with the same things. And let me give you some examples. One is you make mistakes in real estate. We all have made terrible mistakes in real estate and it always seems to come with like some big losses or emotional stress, such as lawsuits or, mm -hmm. um, losing a lot of money off of a certain deal and figuring out, do I stay in it? Do I get out of this alligator? And so what I, I really liked was that some of the motivational um, components of it was relating to others on that level. And I loved the miracle moments and, mm. you know, all of this of like, Hey, this stuff happens. It's not just you. This happens to all of us. And yeah. I think that's just a really good reminder um, on the real estate side. And then I also thought things like um, the uneducated economist mm -hmm. talking about, you know, everyone has the same question. Should I buy now? Should mm -hmm. I buy now? And I actually thought that that was probably the most eloquent speech of someone who I don't even know if he's in real estate, but just mm, talking really. about the market yeah. and where we are and having folks that aren't in real estate, but talking about the uh, macro economy that impacts real estate, I think was really helpful because it made it, it, you walked away being almost more encouraged to be like, yes, I can do it right yeah. now. And I thought that aspect of it was, was really cool. So again, not self-interested in any way. The um, event, it was very much about the audience for the audience mm. and building that culture. And I thought that was phenomenal. Yeah. One of the, one of the things that, you know, as the, as the host that I probably, I mean, there's so many moving parts on an event, as you know, but one of the, one of the most important ones was the agenda was trying to put together the, the pieces and juggle them. So it, it, it there's, they don't all sound the same. There's uniqueness, there's separation, but but um, you have to have the right person in the right spot. For example, the miracle moment was was Adrian Hernandez. I couldn't yeah. imagine a better person after lunch on day one. <laughs> it's just like, you know where Adrian's going. He's he's gonna get him up out of their seats. He's gonna he, he's gonna tell an emotional story and he's gonna talk about loss and he's gonna talk about how to how to move on from that. So um yeah, shout out to Adrian for for just crushing that after lunch. It's the hardest spot. It is the absolute hardest spot in a, in the agenda is, is after lunch day one. Yeah. The other thing I really um, want those listening to this um, and potentially didn't go to the event um, to take away was everyone was so real. It was interesting hearing, I think, Jason and Jen at the beginning. Yeah. Said when you, they published their salaries up on the screen. They did. And yeah. what was really cool about that was like when you see a salary of like sixty seven thousand dollars and you're like wait they can do it and quit their jobs there is no excuse for anyone else out here when you're working on one salary at like yeah. of that and yeah no, have that was 67k men. for the family that wasn't for the family one of yes. their, that was it <laughs> that was all they had yeah that was the household salary that was that's amazing yeah the other thing i loved about jason and jen is uh she was a detective and she went back to their I guess it was emails, not texts, emails from their er like early relationships, right? They were talking about money and getting on mm -hmm. the same page. And um, 
I encourage couples, right? If you're in a relationship and if you're in a new relationship, talk about money. You got to make sure your money mindsets, it can't be a four letter word, right? Money has five letters. It's okay. You can talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. And so I think all of that of the community and the event was obviously about the community. And that was really inspiring because you walked away from the event saying there's no excuses. You mm -hmm. know, there's there's these couples who make a lot less than folks who haven't started out and they're mm -hmm. able to do it and they have children and they're not making excuses. And then you have um, folks telling you, hey, even if you make a mistake, you got to um, uh, keep your mind on on the goal and learn from those and think of those as as really great moments all the way to saying, hey, it is a good time to consider real estate and investing. And um, so, yeah, overall, I have to say um, I, this community, this particular community, one rental at a time, I think is so special. And what I don't see with any other community in real estate is every time you have a host, they have their own interest in mind. And their own interest is their own syndicate fund, or, you know, they have their own mortgage company, like whatever it is, there's always some reason that they're, mm -hmm. that they're there preaching. And mm -hmm. one rental at yeah. a time is totally different. Yeah, most, most create most, I don't know, hosts, whatever you want to call them, they have a, they're just using it for pipeline. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm not, there's no pipeline. There's no agenda. Wasn't selling anything. Won't sell anything. So yeah, I think that I do think it was, and, and it's really funny. Uh, I don't think you were there for this part. Cause you had to, you had to catch a flight to celebrate mom's birthday. So shout mm -hmm. out mom, happy birthday, mom. Um, So at the closing, like the last five minutes of the event, I'm on stage and I'm relating to the audience what happened, right? So Friday, so this is pre-event. If you were to put a gun to my head, I probably would have said, no, we're not doing this again. I committed to one. I'm I'm delivering one. I've delivered one. I'm out, right? I can feel good about that. So then Saturday comes. Saturday uh, exceeded all expectations on every level, everywhere, even mine, right? And I have pretty high expectations. So uh, we head home. I think we get home about 9.15 because Saturday went to 8 o'clock, right? It went to 8 yeah. or 8.15, right? And then I'm the last one to leave, right? I got to make sure everybody's out because I don't, I don't want to leave it for the, for the facility. I want to be make sure that my people don't trash places. Yeah. So we, so so we leave, and Olivia and I get home. I finally eat because I don't eat during the day on an event because you know, oh I just gosh. don't, I, I don't want any of that. So I had, I hadn't eaten all day. I had, I had some coffee and water, but that was it. So, but the good news is I was ready for it. So I had pizza or I had dinner extra dinner for the night before knowing that this, so this wasn't a surprise to me. This is just how I roll. So we had dinner together, Olivia and I, and, you know, we go to bed a little later than normal for me. It's 10. So we go to bed like 10 30 and, and I can't sleep. This never happens to me ever. I close my eyes. I'm out. I feel like I'm levitating on my bed with, I don't know, buzzing energy or whatever it is. I can't turn it off. I, I usually don't have to, but I'm fighting it. I look at my clock, I think the last time at like one or two in the morning. Oh, that's and the as, worst. <laughs> and as soon as I do that, I'm like, holy shit, I have to do this again. I have to get this feeling again. So once I told myself we're going to do this again, I was able to fall asleep and get like four hours before we turned around and did it again. But yeah, I... I I had never even thought about day two, like doing it again, because I was so focused on this and I didn't feel like I opened myself up to commit to anything else. So yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to do it again. Prisons day weekend next year. That's awesome. And same location, same location, Great. same everything. Uh, you know, we'll, 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 we'll see how I can exceed expectations. And, and I want to close on this because I think it's important and we opened on it, but I think it I, it's where I want to end. The only thing that I couldn't control, that was 100% out of my control and is a control freak that it bothers me, but I couldn't control it, was the audience, was the audience. I couldn't control who paid. I couldn't control who showed up. I couldn't control where they sat. I couldn't control their networking. I couldn't control if they left and went to a casino. I couldn't, I couldn't control the audience. And the audience blew me away. Just... I was running around. I was checking on people. I was watching from above. I was down below. Blew me away. 
people were not clicky. Nobody was big timing it. The millionaires that were there, they were in it. They were not like, hey, put me in a green room away from people. Yeah. They were there. They were taking pictures. They were doing questions. Um, I don't know if you know this, but that podcast room that I set up that I think you were part of at least yes. once. Um, I set that up. But first off, that cost me 20 grand. I, I can imagine it was like the most impressive podcast yeah. room that shout I've out, seen. Shout out up. Heartfelt Productions yeah. for an amazing job. But they did that because two reasons. One, I wanted to give back to my millionaires because they were flying out. They were doing things. I wanted them to create context. I wanted my millionaires to network with each other, right? A lot of our communications are you and me. Yeah. I have this whole network, right? You have connected with Dion, um, but there's a lot more you could connect with. So I wanted to give back. And second, this is just who I am. I wanted to exceed expectations. So there are 21 podcasts recorded that we're going to add to the virtual session. And anybody who came, anybody who bought a ticket to the event or virtual is going to get the recording and they're going to get the 21 podcast is a complete surprise and bonus. So um, that's awesome. It's a way that to, is, it's a way, think about it. 20 hours of content plus another, I don't know, 12 hours of podcast. Just exceed expectations where I can. Yeah, no, it was incredible. And I have to say the podcasters in there and, and watching them, it, it was it was it was very impressive. So I love that. Sean Cannell did six CEO of Think Media, nine figure brand, did six podcasts. Yeah. It's uh just shout out Sean for for you know doing those back to back. I couldn't believe it. It's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, no, I think uh, from that perspective, to your point, the millionaires, the ones um, doing the podcast, but more importantly, everyone in the audience there, it didn't matter where you were from. Everyone was collaborating on the same level. And it's really hard to build a very good culture and definitely saw that at the event. Um, yeah, so me too. Uh, I did too. Ho hopefully, hopefully I'm invited back next year. <laughs> Well, you can always well, buy a ticket. Hopefully, I can, can get a ticket. No, that's what I'm saying. I hope that you will, no, that I can buy a ticket. of course. I was teasing. I was teasing. Of course, you'll be there. If you want to be there, you'll be there. But again, it might be, uh, the, I do think next year, for this President's Day weekend, I actually, I personally like the fact that it's a long weekend. So you can mm -hmm. leave Monday as opposed to leaving yes. Sunday. I like that. That's why I, I've chosen, I chose that weekend. I do think next Next year, it's around Valentine's Day. I think Friday might be Valentine's Day. But hey, come to Vegas, celebrate with your loved one. What's wrong with that? Exactly. And they can. Yeah. And it's all about, as as you know, with a couple getting on the same level as your significant others. So they'll they'll learn a lot learn a lot from it. And uh, it looks like we've I've already identified couple or speaker number one. Uh, the lumberjack uh, saw what Jason and Jen did to kick us off, yeah. and he he tapped me on the shoulder and said. I want my wife, Ashley, and I to kick off next year. So That's we're going to learn about uh, Ashley uh, being thrown into the fire because, again, Lumberjack does all his own stuff. So uh, I look forward to uh, Matt and Ashley kicking off uh, speaker number one, 2025. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I want to congratulate you because you, you were the session right before lunch. Uh, you were very gracious. You didn't make it about Hemlane. You made it about the audience. You talked about convenience culture. Uh, you talked about AI. You answered a series of questions. I saw you swarmed after your presentation, which to me meant people got it. Um, you know, as someone, Hemlane uh, did pay a, um, I don't know, what are they called? A fee. What's it called? I don't know what's uh Sponsorship fee. A sponsorship, uh, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you did sponsor. I had five sponsors. I don't hide anything. I had five sponsors. And um I I just appreciate that because you could have made it, you could have made it a hemline advertising, and you didn't, uh, which I appreciate. I didn't think you would, but you could have, right? I've I've seen others do that in the past. Um, so shout out to you for for understanding the community and my vision for it. So uh, I want to thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think for those of you who didn't watch that, um, what's really interesting with Hemlane and just technology in general um, is that there is this um, convenience culture out there and it actually increases anxiety. They say there's a great book on it called 4,000 Weeks. Mm -hmm. And 4,000 weeks is essentially the time until um, you die. 
mm. is that that's how much 4,000 weeks is. And what, what I think is important to take away is that balance. And um, Michael, you talk about it so well of doing the work. But people are so used to just pressing buttons or immediacy of getting things. I want to go on Amazon and I want to buy this right now. I right. want to go on Instacart or DoorDash. And, and so there's really a balance there. And I think those who win at real estate will understand that, that very, very well and how you can use technology to your advantage, but how you also have to do um, some of it, a lot of the work. And finding that balance is how you're going to win in real estate investing. And so I think that's really important for anyone to see that, yes, technology is there to help you, but it can also hurt you if you use it in the wrong way. And yeah. so really thinking about that balance, I think, is is very, very important. Yeah. And as I closed your session, I always recommend this, even if you're a brand new landlord and you own nothing. You must go to hemlane.com, download the 14-day trial, practice, folks, practice being a landlord, advertise, repair requests, collect rent, late rent, talk, communicate, get your friends involved, take the 14-day trial, just build the build the practice, build the muscle. Uh, Dana and team at Hemlane give you that, so go take advantage. Uh, any closing thoughts? I just do the work um, and definitely mention um, uh, Michael Zuber in one rental at a time because you do get 20% off when you uh, try our property management. Awesome. Thank you so much.